good day my friends. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great. I'm doing great, especially today because we are revisiting one of my favorite museums I've ever discovered in Los Angeles, the Valley Relics Museum. This right here is a car that used to belong to Nudie Cohen, the man who created all those wonderful Western suits for all the, you know, people like well, everyone from Hank Williams, Dolly Parton, and everyone down the line. That's how I found out about Valley Relics. I fell down a rabbit hole researching. Nudie found out that his granddaughter had loaned a lot of stuff to this museum. And then when I came here and found out about it, I was blown away. This museum focuses on the beauty of not Hollywood, not Beverly Hills, but the Valley. And the Valley was a place that a lot of celebrities chose to retreat, to get away from Hollywood, to get away from paparazzi, and made their life there. And we're gonna see a lot of really cool things, especially one of the things I haven't seen that they've gotten since my last trip, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Spicoli Van. So this should be a blast. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. If you don't know the nudie Cohen story, he actually decorated this car, this was his wife's, and he would put all those things on there himself, all the weaponry, all the way down to the front of the car with steer horns, and he also did the interiors. Look at that. I was really sad to see that the Sportsman Lodge got tore down since I moved. That was a place that Clark Gable used to hang out and drink at, a lot of people. It was a real staple for the valley and now it is completely gone. So this is actually a passion project, this museum. A guy who just, he's in the industry of making t-shirts for bands that are on tour. He loved the valley and he's opened this on his own dime. So some of the defunct places that were kind of staples around the valley, he sells shirts for people that miss those places. The Country Club, a lot of people went and saw country concerts at the Country Club. It was a rock venue. Here we go. This is the second location to my knowledge. I went to his first location and this is awesome. The people that have the Jack Oakey collection, the actor, they have it all on display here. And here it is. Jack Oakey was a very well-known comedian, worked with Charlie Chaplin, made tons of movies, and made his home in the Valley. Was one of the premier actors to do that, one of the first. I actually toured his house. His house was the same. He bought Barbara Stanwyck's house. There he is with his wife in those pictures. Jack Oakey's feather tie, I love it. That was Jack's bedroom telephone. He and his wife had separate rooms, and when I asked why, they said, oh no, they didn't have any marital problems or anything. They did it because Jack was filming so much, he would keep a crazy schedule of waking up early, so they just had separate rooms. Look at all this jewelry, though. This is amazing. That's all Jack's jewelry. Gift from Donald O'Connor, those cufflinks with the faces in them. It's amazing. And those have the Oscar emblem on them. You might hear some crackling in my camera. I got sanded at the beach. The ticket from them seeing Jack and his wife seeing Richard Burton as Hamlet. My favorite things that Tommy, the guy who owns this place does, he saves. Any sign that someone is willing to donate, he says, hey, I'll find a place for it. So you'll see all kinds of really cool old valley signs and that's what all this stuff is but it's a whole lot more they have collections they have a little bit of everything here's johnny crawford's collection from the rifleman some of his awards his memorabilia look at that that's great people that grew up watching johnny crawford can come here and re-celebrate their youth. This is all Chuck Connor stuff. Also in the Rifleman, you can see that's when he was a baseball player. Him as Geronimo, the Rifleman, of course. 
the back of his chair. Oh, that's cool. Chuck Connors handprint. This is Johnny Crawford began his career as one of Walt Disney Company's original Mouseketeers in 1955. So there's Johnny's shirt, a Mouseketeer hat, painting of him, his tap shoes, his key to Tomorrowland, which is kind of cool, very cool, and a signed Mickey Mouse Club lunchbox. This is some of the memorabilia from James Arness. Gunsmoke, how cool is that? Look at all this stuff they donated. His chair, if you look at the back of the chair, James Arness. This is great, I love this. That was his jacket and hat and everything from Gunsmoke. There's a glass Marshall Dillon cowboy hat. <laughs> and a picture and that outfit right there is the same one in the case that he's wearing how about that along with the boots the iverson movie ranch gosh that's where like um a lot of westerns were filmed um lone ranger was one of them was filmed out there gosh this stuff is so cool to see all the old signs Hollywood Stuntmen's Hall of Fame is also housed in here. This is more of Johnny Crawford's Rifleman stuff over here. Right over here, he's got James Brolin's suit from when he played Pee Wee in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> the Cigar Store Indian from Knott's Berry Farm's Ghost Town. Here's some stuff celebrating Elvira. Elvira was a staple of the valley. Here's some of her shoes. Some Universal Monster stuff over here. And then this case is dedicated to Glenn Strange, the man who played Frankenstein in here. And that's him in that picture from Lone Ranger. And here they have some stuff from Creature from the Black Lagoon because they have some of the props, the original hands from the movie. I kid you not. <laughs> How awesome is that? 1954. Whoa, who's that? This is from Man of a Thousand Faces, the movie they made about Lon Chaney. This was Cagney's face. And then down here, they have one of the Mole People masks from the Mole People movie, 1956. Wow, this case is showing that this is the mask that Jack Kevin created for this island Earth. Wow, that is epic. And there's one of the original prosthetic feet. Wow. It was repainted, but that's the original. Oh, this looks like this was actually a, uh, a recasting because they kept the original molds so that was a recasting of the original mold and that's buffalo bill up there and over here we have some costumes from rin tin tin james brown who portrayed lieutenant rip masters and then roy rogers shirt down here framed They're actually showing that the Spawn movie ranch, they film movies is where the Manson family lived. This was Dale Evans' dress, or Roger's wife, in all the movies with him. This is one of my favorite things in the whole place. That was made by Nudie for the museum, or Rogers and Dale Museum. How cool is that? <laughs> and look at all the signs and everything. Yeah, we're gonna see some bad news bear stuff. These are the Porter Ranch horses when you would go into Porter Ranch. Those would greet you. Then Bear's Custom, I didn't know he had this, the Bear's Custom sign. That was sad when that closed. He made all the movie cars. Well, a lot of them, you know. Or at least gave himself credit for it. Here's the other Porter Ranch horse, man on the horse. Tonight's show with Jay Leno, sign, and licorice pizza. 
Yeah, see in front of the police car and everything, there's a set of TVs that was in Jack Webb's house because he was trying to keep up on the competition while he was doing Dragnet. So you can see the times are all listed for the uh, different time zones. And then this says NBC above it, CBS, ABC, Channel 9, Channel 11. So there you go. To be competitive, you had to have nine TVs. <laughs> so here's the counter of the old licorice pizza. That's pretty cool. My friend uh, Vicki Hamilton, who was the original manager of Guns N' Roses, she used to work, got her start at Licorice Pizza. Some of, there's the register. Now I mentioned what a fan I am of nudies. There's the nudie sign. It kind of goes without saying if you're going to mention nudies, you should also talk about the Palomino. The country bar of the valley that everybody performed at. Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis, Graham Parsons. Yeah, there's a list right there. That's outside of it. Johnny Paycheck, Charlie Rich, Billy Burnett. This is for KLAC. And some of Nudie's memorabilia in this case. See the belt buckles. He would gift those belt buckles to his celebrity clients or they would give them to him. I think that was how it was. That was kind of like a tradition. There's Rex Allen's nudie suit, or one of. You can see how intricate the bling and everything was. He made Elvis's gold lame suit. There he is with John Wayne, fitting John Wayne. He also did Graham Parsons suit. He did Andy Griffith's uh, sheriff's costume for the Andy Griffith show. The earliest nudie label right there. There he is with one of his cars, like that station wagon we saw outside. And here, nudie swinging doors. This is great. <laughs> Those that have been uh, like saloon style doors at his shop on Lancashire. And here you can see a couple of jackets from the famous Palomino that I mentioned. Clint Eastwood filmed some of the scenes for Every Which Way But Loose in there. There's another one of the Palomino signs. And this is dedicated to like Valley Rock and Roll. So it's got like licorice pizza, some of the um, radio stations that were out here and people that performed in the Valley. Here's Sean Cassidy. Legendary Malt Party and Sock Hop. Sign Sock. Oh, the Starwood sign. Motley Crue got their start there. Van Halen played there. And that was owned by Eddie Nash, the man implicated in the Wonderland John Holmes murders. That's interesting to see. Look, you can see the old... Uh, call sign bumper stickers and everything eight tracks canoga park bowling alley oh there's the there's the sign from bad news bears tommy martindale you can see the home team and everything that's all in bad news bears right there yeah this is all bad news bears going all the way up the wall from the stuff that i already showed you to the other signs that are used in the movie like these, you're like, hey, 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 what about that jersey? Oh yeah, that's Toby's jersey from the movie. That was his chair, his actor's chair, his cleats, his hat, and his number two jersey. The no, th no rock throwing. And then he loaned some of his memorabilia, that was him. And you can see his telegrams and his script and things like that. And then other jerseys from the other movies. Breaking training. Another script. Actually, a couple of scripts. I love this stuff. And he doesn't get any credit. I never hear anybody talk about it, but Tommy's the guy who actually rescued the tail of the pup restaurant 
and got the guy who reopened it to take it on and agree to reopen it. So look at this room. It just features a lot of the amazing signs from the valley. The Foster Freeze up there. The original Palomino sign. He gets them all working if they don't work. I love this, man. How great. Norman's Rare Guitars. Gosh. he wears. They wear a Norman's Rare Guitars shirt. That's a famous guitar shop out here. They wear that in uh, Spinal Tap. <laughs> But they get a lot of famous people with guitars, and you can actually run into famous guitarists there. God, that's so cool to see the Palomino sign. And uh, this is the room that they house Spicoli's van. I was going to try and wait to make my way over to it, but I can't. I can't help myself. Seriously, I just can't help myself. With a Mel's drive-in sign, I love it. How cool is that? I'll plug in some matchups here so you can kind of see it, but oh yeah, that's where they pop open those doors and the smoke comes bellowing out and Spicoli comes falling out of the van and everything. What a great addition since I've been here. When I saw he had acquired that and everything, I was like, oh man, I, <laughs> I would have came the first weekend he had it. I love fast times. And I, as you know, I, I just, I love movie cars too, so. Catch a fat wave! Heck, if I ask, you'd probably let me in it, but I'm not going to. Volkswagen Microbus became a cultural icon in its own right. <laughs> it was associated with surfers in the 1960s. It was a perfect car for Fast Times at Ridgemont High in the character of Jeff Spicoli, a perpetually stoned surfer dude. The original owner of this bus lived in Los Angeles and used it as a daily driver for his family. In 1981, he was approached by a representative of Universal Studios to use the bus in a movie. The current owner purchased the bus in 2015 because the movie was what originally inspired them to buy their first VW bus. That is so cool. This is so rad to see. <laughs> the early days of Sean Penn. That was a blast. That is so cool to see that. Never went to 4 and 20. Didn't know about that one. I love seeing the Rexalls. Love seeing the Bob's Big Boy sign over here. Look at this. And then you've got a light up Marilyn Monroe, a neon sign of Marilyn. Brother's dining room up there. Oh, cool, look, Ben Franks. Ben Franks was a restaurant that the Mel's Diner on Sunset Boulevard was originally Ben Franks. And when they announced looking for guys to play the monkeys in the description, when they were looking for the actors, they said Ben Frank types, because it was like a hangout. Then here we have Pioneer Chicken. I think OJ owned some Pioneer Chickens at one point. OJ Simpson, not OJ Mayo. Cool sign. Cool car, wow. I dig it. And then we have a Paul Bunyan head. I think this is one of the original Taco Bell signs. We have some Animaniacs over here. And look at that Mustang sign. Some of this stuff I've shown before, but this place is just so cool that I, I don't mind showing it again. I want people to come here. The, this museum is only open on Saturday and Sundays. So take advantage of it when you can. This is a car, like a Route 66 car, with some really amazing artwork. Yeah, you can see Eleanor Roosevelt over here, James Dean's over here. Let's see if I can show you a little bit. I'm not sure where this is from. 
That's a great sign. Got himself a root beer and a burger. That's a great sign. Whoever made that for him, that is awesome. I hope that somebody did that as a gift. He does so much. Tommy does so much that owns this place. I, w I hope people can help him out. Just sharing this stuff on this channel is like a tiny, tiny, tiny thing that I can do. But I really do appreciate his museum. I, I think this place is second to none. Look, the Malibu Grand Prix. We had one of those in my town when I was a kid. I used to love going to that. Those signs are just so cool. <laughs> Charlie O's. And then we saw this bowl one. Now we've got a music scene sign. Then one of the other things I love, he has some video games over here and they're all, at least last time I was here, they're all set to play for free. So you can just hang out. Look, another Palomino sign. One of the original. And one of the signs for the Kit Kat Club, which was like a strip bar. I believe Charles Manson had his girls dance there. And we have a coffee shop sign and a giant bell. Not sure what the story on the bell is. But I did forget to show the back of the Fast Times. It's got the whole gang in there. <laughs> Along with the matching. That's great. If the owners of this thing see this video, thank you so much for making it available to fans. You can even have the old phone booth experience with an original phone booth and phone and how to use it oh no no no! it's called the candy cat my bad not the kit cat this was the candy cat then in here we have some more signs bel air camera that was a famous camera place i think that's henry's tacos yeah henry's tacos with the original menus And here he's showing the history of boxing. I didn't even know they had boxing here. At the, oh, maybe I did. The Jeffrey's Barn, that's right. The Jeffrey's Barn was uh, a barn that I believe Walter Knott purchased and moved to Knott's Berry Farm. But he's got different uh, famous fights that took place here. Sugar Ray Robinson, Frankie Crawford here. Cassius Clay, Sonny Liston. Oh, I was in Santa Monica at the Civic Auditorium. Look, he has some original gloves here. He's got one of James Jeffries, who owned the Barnes signed hat. And then some of the gear. It's some pretty old stuff. That's a van signed by Evander Holyfield. That's awesome. He's got one of the corner benches and the spit bucket. That's crazy. And there's some of the, there's a certificate of victories from the Jeffries Barn fights. If you can see that. And here we have a sign for the white horse. Looks like an old police motorcycle also. Phil's. Come get a bite at Phil's. And in this case, he's featuring that they had a lot of racing here in the valley as well as uh, BMX racing, BMX bike racing. Holy cow, look at this. That's a lion head, but that's not just any old lion head. That is the actual TV door knocker from 1313 Mockingbird Lane. Home of Herman, Lily, Grandpa, Eddie, and Marilyn Munster. This is amazing. This is a diorama of Ben-Hur, the movie Ben-Hur. Those of you that don't know, there was a silent movie version that was a huge deal starring Ramon Navarro and Francis X. Bushman. 
and it went over budget and just had tons and tons of problems. Had people die in the chariot race scenes and everything. But it was like an epic movie for its day. And they remade it and it was probably even more popular. And it actually came from the home of Jack Webb. Can you believe that? It was in his den at his home in Encino. The family donated it. There's an NBC movie light. And here they have a hat signed by one of the most famous cowboys of them all, Tom Mix. Oh, I can't believe I walked right past this without showing it. You see above it, it says the Brady Brides. That's because this door was the childhood horror door, <laughs> door of Jan Brady. All the, look at how she decorated Eve Plum. That was her name, of course. There's Jan. She's got her name on there a couple times. The Raspberries. What a great band. It's kind of interesting to see what she would put on here, right? As a young kid. Disney. Marriage is one of the prime causes of divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody took her door handle though. And here's your proof. If the, all the Eve Plum writing on there wasn't enough. Check this out. Right in this little case down here. Roddy McDowell donated his prosthetic face from Planet of the Apes. Some of the pieces of it. Isn't that awesome? There he is. It's amazing how much he documented of this filming, the movie making process. He took his own camera and documented a lot of it himself. And then here's a history of aviation in the valley because there's a lot. I mean, there's like Burbank Airport, Van Nuys Airport and everything. And they have a meal heater from Walt Disney Aviation Gulfstream. That was at the uh, Burbank Airport. And I walked right past this as well. <laughs> oh, just, you know, just Marilyn Monroe's chair, you know, her favorite chair from the powder room of Glenn Ford's Beverly Hills home. Huh. And then the reason they have Humphrey Bogart here is because the museum is actually at the Van Nuys Airport. Actually it takes up, as you can see here, two airplane hangers. We were in that second room. This is the first room. Casablanca was actually filmed partially at this airport. Particularly the love scene, which is like the, the ending scene when she's gonna take off and everything, you know, that scene was filmed at a hangar that was here. The hangar was dismantled and is still on site, but it's just dismantled. And the owner of this place and I have talked numerous times about going over there and trying to find it. Who didn't love the Orange Julius? God, those were great. Good friends are hard to find. Yes, they are. Well, my friends, I want to thank Rose Lamas for becoming my newest Patreon and helping to support this channel and the adventures. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this place. I think this is absolutely one of the must-see museums in Los Angeles when you're coming to visit the Valley Relics Museum done with pure love no you know attempt at trying to get rich or anything here this is just pure love of the valley so thank you all for watching thank you for supporting please like this channel and subscribe and we'll see you all next time have a great night and goodbye <laughs>